Even in this era of artificial intelligence, augmented reality, and electric cars, there are some skills which should not be lost to time. Welcome, I'm Carl Morawski, and this, this is the channel that helps you own better, look better, and live better. Now, I know what you're probably thinking, and this is not some on-ramp to being a crazy doomsday prepper, but I do feel like there are some skills which have been lost to time, which used to be handed down from generation to generation, which were worse off without. Now, probably the most appropriate thing when it comes to this channel is how to maintain and repair your own clothing. We talk about buying fewer, better things on this channel, so knowing how to maintain them and repair them as needed is really important. Simple things like knowing how to read a care tag, hanging your stuff dry rather than using the high heat setting on your dryer, brushing off your boots at the end of every single day go a long way towards maintaining your clothing. However, at some point, you're probably gonna have to do a repair. And whether that's as simple as sewing on a button, hand darning your clothes, or mending a tear, just not having to pay somebody to do those things and be able to make that repair and extend the life of your clothing is something that has seemed to be kind of lost to time, especially in this fast fashion throwaway society that we live in now. Look, if you're spending two or three hundred dollars on a flannel shirt, you better get many, many, many years of life out of that thing. And even if you don't want to do any of the repairs yourself, maybe it's just as simple as knowing somebody who can. So getting friendly with your local tailor or a, a sendaway service, there are different places that you could send your clothing where they can make the alterations and repairs that you need. But being able to extend that investment in your clothing goes a long way, and I feel like it's a skill that's been lost to time. Number two is knowing how to build and maintain a fire. Now, when I was a kid, our main source of heat was the wood stove. So from a young age, I learned how to split, season, stack, make a fire, maintain that fire, the idea of getting up in the middle of the night to feed the fire so that it was warm in the morning. All of those things are very, very old school. And I mean, oftentimes we would say, you know, come on, mom, dad, what are we doing living on Little House on the Prairie? But now it's a skill that I'm very glad that I have. In the case of a power outage or something just going wrong, at least I know that I can keep my family warm. And at the very least, it's nice to see that when it comes time to make a campfire or something like that just for recreation, I could do it pretty easily. Which brings me to today's sponsor, the Sun Joy Smokeless Patio Fire Pit. As we head into warmer weather, this small portable fire pit makes backyard gatherings easy. Made of rust-proof stainless steel, the portable fire pit utilizes a design which allows for secondary combustion, keeping smoke production to a minimum. All that really means is that you spend less time dodging smoke and more time making s'mores. And the fact that it's lightweight and portable means that you don't need a permanent fixture in your yard. You can place the fire pit wherever you want and store it when needed. The fire pit comes with everything you need except for dry wood and some tinder with a waterproof cover and fire poker allowing you to get started with the fun right away. And you can save a decent chunk of change by using my code CARL15 at checkout. And if your kids are anything like mine, you could use that extra money towards marshmallows. My entire channel, as an extension of owning fewer, better things, is all about living a better life. And there's no better way to do that than to spend it with the people who you love. And having this little fire pit makes it super easy. Just bring it out from the garage, set it up where you want, light your fire, enjoy it. And once it cools down and you can get rid of the ash safely, you can put it away. So you don't need to build some giant thing in the middle of your yard. Anyway, go and get yourself one. They're really great. And be sure you use my code CARL15 at checkout to save yourself some scratch. Thank you very much to Sunjoy for sponsoring this video. Number three, growing your own food. This seems to be something that people are becoming more interested in now, but people are really interested in knowing what goes into their food. And with inflation, it is kind of nice to know that you're self-sufficient and you can create your own vegetables or have some chickens for farm fresh eggs. If you want to process those chickens, that's on you. But being able to supply yourself with your own food I don't know, man, something just tastes better when it comes from your own garden. Farm fresh eggs are so much different than store-bought eggs in taste, color, look, everything. And until you've experienced that, it's really hard to explain to somebody. Now, resources to learn this skill are everywhere, not only here on YouTube, but I'm sure that there's probably a community garden near you, even if you don't have the land to do it yourself, where you can meet other people who are doing the same kind of thing. They'll pass on their knowledge. In my experience, people are very, very eager to tell you the things that they've learned so that you can become a better small farmer yourself. And whether that's just growing tomatoes or maybe one crop, you know, just in a small quantity so you can say, you like that salad? That came from my garden. 
But like anything, it'll take time. You'll make mistakes. And, you know, like me, if the first time a raccoon gets into your chicken coop, you'll question the whole thing. But still, I think it's very a good thing to know how to make your own food, how to grow your own food, and uh, just self-sufficiency. Number four, beekeeping. Now, my father-in-law was the first person I ever knew to get into beekeeping, and until that point, I didn't realize how intense it is. Now, whether you get into beekeeping to help the dwindling numbers of bees, or you actually intend on, you know, taking the honey and using it for yourself, or you plan on putting it into jars and selling it, there's actually a lot to it, and it's very interesting. Now, luckily, it's actually pretty inexpensive to get into. You don't need a whole bunch of machinery, but you definitely need to understand bees. And again, the internet's your friend. It takes almost nothing. Now there are send-away kits that come with everything, bees included, to get you started. And I saw a lot of these things in inner cities, on top of hotel rooms. I mean, places that you wouldn't expect to see a beehive well, there it is. And again, I think what they're trying to do is help the bee population because these pollinators, they have a direct line to our health. And beekeeping seems like such an old thing to do. Why would you even want to get started? But I think it's something that until you start doing it or, or maybe know somebody who does it and they tell you about the health benefits of local honey and stuff like that, you know, it's worth looking into. And number five, woodworking. I see so many people getting into woodworking now. Now, I don't just mean the maker community, which is amazing. It really is. People are making stuff that I never even thought was possible before. But I mean on a much smaller level. Getting into woodworking, knowing how to do your own trim, knowing how to repair your own home, and this could kind of extend into a lot more as far as home maintenance and repairs, but being able to do your own stuff and being self-sufficient, it, it makes you feel good. You don't have to pay somebody. Paying somebody to come out and make a repair costs you hundreds or thousands of dollars, but being able to repair a piece of trim that your dog chewed up or make simple toys for your kids. Now, my grandfather was a carpenter, and he used to make me all kinds of stuff when I was a kid. He'd make me swords out of wood and shields and all kinds of neat stuff that he would just cut out on his machinery, and, and, and it was great. And it was I really wish that I had that stuff now because it was a direct link to him. Then when he passed away, I inherited some of his tools, and I started learning how to use different tools myself. All that to say it's really great to be self-sufficient and make repairs where needed in your home. Now, there are so many other skills. I mean, I could go on and on and on. Keeping it to five was really just a way to keep this video from being, being too long. But I certainly want to hear from you and which ones you think are lost to time or are seeming to disappear or just something that you start picking up that, you know, people start saying, what are you, 80? I've certainly heard that before. I mean, I saw a lot of people crocheting and doing different things that, you know, we think of our grandparents of having done. But I really do think that when it comes to, you know, being able to be self-sufficient, to make your own repairs, to be able to hold your own in case things go sideways for a little while, it, it can't be overstated how important that is. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Again, thank you so much to Sunjoy for sponsoring this video, and I will catch you next time.